وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا What is your church name, by the way? Oh, Ashkara Allah Ali Sula. Oh, nice. Yeah, no, okay. Um, thank Allah for it. Uh, uh, nice. Um, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do believe there is Allah? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, good. Because, yeah. Because there's a Christian guy that stands next to us and he said there's no such thing as Allah. So I just wanted to. So that's good. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Boston? Yeah. Good evening, Boston. Are you like a preacher or like no, a I'm sales rep? Nice. Yeah, I'm not a Christian, but I'm, gotcha. I just I work in finance. Oh, nice. And I, I, just, I work in med devices. Oh, oh awesome. Oh, okay. That's um, cool. I, you know, I'm just interested. Uh, I started like getting more into now. like learning okay. about my Muslim friends, my faith, and so on. Maybe like a couple years ago. Okay. And then um, I went to Jordan for a wedding. Oh, nice. I love Jordan. I've been there. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I was in a place called Umm Oh, it's I love, I love the people. I love the, the weather. I love the whole culture. It's wonderful. Um, and I met a bunch of people and just asking the questions and stuff. I'm still kind of exploring things. Nice. And uh, and so one of the guys, uh, you know, we continued to talk over WhatsApp, and he he wanted to get his shake involved. Okay. And then you know, since you know, other tech was for the Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not not flattering. I'm saying. I respect you, man. I appreciate your good manners. You're not yelling at me, so that, that's a good start. <laughs> Probably not. I'm sure you've seen the video. Sometimes yeah. their cohorts get a little it's, it's, aggressive. It's, it's, yeah. it's embarrassing. Yeah. But I appreciate that there's a that we can have a good civil conversation. Uh, I um, That's lovely. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, the shape. You know, my, you're sending me your video. Oh, wow. Like, people know you, right? I'm good luck. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so I was watching a bunch of those, and I started to kind of like learn uh, more about them. Um, and then, and then, okay, so then we met, and then we we're talking, and then, okay, yeah. So you said so I think you know a little bit about me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know much about you. Yeah, yeah. And so, by the way, do we, are we close to the same age? I heard your. I listened to your testimony. Oh, you're trying to get my age. Now? No, you don't have to. No, you don't have to say. Okay. I'm just going to say. I'm 45. You, 45. No, 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 no. When you said pager, yeah, 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 yeah. I listened to your testimony. By the way, right? Like, oh, yeah, that's really fun. I do prison ministry and I'm just like, I, guess. Oh, I used to do prison ministry, but then they didn't let me anymore. They said I travel too much. I don't know how oh. to stop doing okay. prison ministry. Anyway, I Thank you. So, my back you know, it's like the page way. It was really powerful. I'm still totally getting it. It makes sense to me. It's been a rough life. Yeah, but you know, it's a good end. Yeah, it's a good end. I love that you're out helping people. Um, and uh, so. Anyway, that's kind of the backstory. Um, so you're a Christian, 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 just regular, kind of like non denominational It's pretty ecumenical, I would say. Okay. Uh, and so, then Christian ministry. Nice. I, uh, and then just like work and stuff and just learning more. And then our conversations kind of centered around the three main questions that I didn't feel like I got a decent answers. I'm here for a different perspective. Okay. I perspective. So if we answer the three questions, where did you go spend? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if I answer them still, well, look, I mean, you look. That's not open minded. Come on. Right, right, right. 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 Look, look what I'm saying. I'm not telling you. If you have a skull, like three shoes, and I answer them for you, then you should be open to be Muslim, right? I'm open to changing my mind, but it's not a specific thing. Yeah, you, hey, hey, you never know. Maybe I'm you never know. Pumpkin and a Vulcan, Lucian, inshallah. Like, I'm open minded, okay? You can prove to me something, I'm ready to accept. Yeah, watching your videos, I don't think anyone's going to convince you of anything. So I didn't come down here to like try to do that. I get that, but but from my perspective, I didn't walk into this as a debate, right? Yeah. Meaning that, as you've seen, my real good at I like the You're a beast, man. You mean in a good way, right? I'm just kidding. No, we're not debating. We're just talking. So, and I'm not a debater, to be honest. Right? Like, yeah, sometimes I have to debate. Sometimes I'm willing to debate. But in essence, I'm a dark. 
I call towards Allah, towards Tawfi. Yeah. The same way Isa ibn Maryam did, call towards worshipping the one God, right? For me, when I start studying religion, I didn't come with the mindset that I'm Muslim and I'm going to block everything out, right? I was open. I went to Bible studies before I studied the Quran. Yeah, yeah, right. And as you know, I memorized in other places as well, Southern Baptist, Church of Rock, I went to Catholic churches. I've, I've been to everything, Kingdom Hall, and Mormon temples, and all that. And when I saw Islam to be the truth, then I accepted it. So if you see Islam to be the truth, if I answer your issue, then you should be open to accept Islam as well, right? So, yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Yeah. Okay. Um, Alright, guys, three things. Yeah, yeah, and I, I just, I don't need to, I don't want to take up that. No, no, we're going to have a discussion. I, mean, okay. I, I got a Bible, we're going to talk about okay. it. You know, obviously, you're a Christian. Yeah. You believe in the Bible, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You believe it's the Word of God. Uh, we'll get to that. Okay, we'll get to that. Uh, first question is, uh, and I'll only do with this in the last couple of years, okay. but uh, watch a lot of the content, what I would call the Mythicist Camp. Uh, I'll just I'll be quick. Like Jay Smith, uh, Afadi, Thomas Alexander. Uh, tell me what they what okay. the issue. The, uh, the issue is uh, this this group of scholars is claiming uh, um, for half of you they're not the YouTubers, but like yeah. actual scholars like uh, I don't know, the Willing or uh, Joe Luxemburg or I wouldn't consider they may be Orientalists at best, but they're not scholars. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Whatever you want to call them, just sure. people claiming things. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, that it, while there may have been a person uh, in the Middle East in the early 17th century, uh, many of them are in the Middle East. Um, that, like most of uh, what we think we know about it, the later traditions, uh, you know, Hadith, Sirah, and so on, so uh, on, are fiction. Okay, so when would Hadith be found out? Um, I guess. The sources I hear would be like the usual ones, Bukhari and Muslim. And I I heard one he's image one I never heard before, which was which was Imam Malik. Yeah, I mean it looks like I don't know if the dates are right, but it looks like he died seven ninety five AD ish. Is that right? Around around it. Um uh, so yeah, and then I guess Ibn Shyam, early ninth century, something like that. So so according to this camp, the person that we call the Prophet Muhammad yeah. was fictional. Now this is very interesting. Um, this gentleman, Andrew, we had a very good conversation. I really enjoyed the conversation. He was well-mannered. I think everybody should watch it to the end. How many ever parts we put this in, you need to watch it all the way to the end because there's a very interesting conversation in the end about the Bible. And I found the conversation to be very pleasant. Having said that, this is a very interesting point that Christian apologists and Islamophobes are bringing now, uh, which is they are trying to deny the existence of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it's really strange because if you look at historians across the board, from Orientalists, from even ones that were very anti-Islam, to Muslim historians, to Hindu, to Christian, to Jewish, to atheist. Everybody has come to an agreement that he did exist, that he, he did, uh, and he raised uh, the Muslim Ummah from the Arabian Peninsula, and then the Muslim armies, they conquered Persia and Rome, and uh, all these evidences that we have, historic consensus that we have, this is a really interesting, strange point. And it's really strange because, as you will hear, when you ask them, do you doubt the existence of Julius Caesar or Alexander the Great, they will say there's no reason for us to doubt it. If it's in the history books, we believe it. But when we have more evidence, artifacts, I mean, we have letters, we have uh, you know, actual items that are in museums belonging to the Prophet wasallam. they don't want to accept it. But what does that mean? It really just shows you how fickle, how thin, how weak the arguments against Islam are when they're unable to prove anything wrong in the Quran when they are unable to prove anything wrong in the character of the Prophet والسلام, they go to ridiculous lengths of trying to deny now some of them as I have seen and I have spoken to will say that he didn't even exist 
And there's something strange. We have hundreds of thousands of eyewitness accounts recorded in the books of Hadith. We have historians across the board that have written, non-Muslim historians have written entire volumes on the life of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. But they will make this. And when, when that is challenged, then they will try to say, okay, he did exist. But Mecca didn't exist. <laughs> you know, even though we have people that have been going to Mecca, that have been going to the Kaaba since the time of the Prophet, peace and blessings be every year in the Hajj, till our time, all these millions of records over thousands of years, but they'll make some strange claims like this. Or, then they'll, when they're cornered with evidence, then they'll say, oh no, he did exist, but he was a Christian. This is the new one that you'll hear. A really strange argument trying to claim that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was a Unitarian Christian without a single shred of evidence. And this is very important. As you watch this video, we're going to present clear evidences, scanned, uploaded, shown of the fact that Prophet did exist and he was upon Tawheed, belief in the oneness of Allah. He was a Muslim. He wrote letters. Those letters are documented. We have so many archaeological contemporary evidences and all of that but what do they have nothing zero zilch no evidence at all because hadith were not written down for 300 years or 200 years that's the idea it would be yeah it would be not that not that there was no person but most of what we think we know kind of like the analogy they use like king arthur bob and Patrick that for probably historical people most of what's well, down to us i think there is a difference Right. It'll be the analogy. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so the first thing is, um, do you believe like Julius Caesar is? Uh, I have no reason to doubt that. Okay. I have no reason to doubt that. Yeah. Uh, what evidences do we have that you wouldn't doubt that he existed? Um, well, I'm not a specialist in this area. I, yeah, I read when I was learning Latin. I read his Gallic Wars. Yeah. Um, so that's one source. Um, I I think Obviously. he did. No. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. So. The point is, when I asked you about Julius Caesar, you said you have no reason to doubt it, even though I don't want to do that. No problem with that. But, but when I asked, you know, I didn't ask you for a thesis. Yeah. You said you have no reason to doubt it. Those are your words. Yeah. So, even though you don't know any first-hand sources yes. that heard him, that you know, that you know, I'm not, I'm not expecting yeah. you to have research already. I'm just saying, right? Like George Washington, if you go all the way back to Alexander the Great. But we think that history, we don't really sit around going, you know what, who's the one that reported, right? So it's, it's very it's, it's very interesting to me, and I'm not talking about you, but yeah. those that put this uh, whispers in your ear, yeah. that they're willing to accept history to one extent, but everything else, but then with greater evidences than Julius Caesar, because, and I'm going to go over that, right? They're, they put doubt on the existence or the persona of the yeah. Wasallam, when they wouldn't use that same standard for other parts of history. Right? Now, that's not the end of the case. Do you want to address what they said? Well, let's take it point by point. Okay. Uh, okay. I want to kind of throw all their things out there and then just okay. see how you. Okay. Uh, so the first part would be uh, they would say there's nothing, no sources in the first hundred years. Or so. Uh, okay. Let's take that at the point first, right? Okay. I don't want to but that's not it. it. It's like the, then you start to look around and you see you know, archaeological evidence from Mecca. You know, it doesn't show up on a map till 900. It probably wasn't there until the 8th century. You look at the coins, you see like weird things. I mean, it's got crosses on his coins. Uh, you really don't get the okay. first what you might call Islamic coins like 690s. So, so let's take the start to add these I know, I know. Does that mean that? I got it. So, okay. But each piece is dependent on, on the first. Fair right? So if hadith were written down and documented in the first century, in the Bible of Pakistan, in the then we would know where Mecca is because it's mentioned in hadith. The funny thing is, they see Jay Smith and all of them, they use hadith against Islam. They use the hadith of Aisha, which is in Bukhari, right, about her age. They use that, they have videos on it. So isn't it hypocritical that you are saying that these hadith are fiction, but then you're using the same book, same hadith to attack Islam? Yeah, I will do that. But they do that. They made it that, right? So well, that's, 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 that's I've seen his video. He's kind of backs off that. I've already watched okay. a lot of their stuff. Yeah, but I've enough. seen a clip where he talks about Aisha. Okay. okay. And you use Aisha Bukhari. Fair enough. So it is, I mean, you would have to agree because Andrew, I've seen you as an honest person. Yeah. That it is hypocritical that somebody says Bukhari is fiction mm -hmm. and at the same time uses it to attack the person of the Prophet. Yeah, if they did that, that would be 
and the use, and you can look it up. Okay. Battle of Favor, for example, and they use the Battle of Favor as saying the Prophet Allah he kills the Jews, which again, as explained in the video, it's not about killing Jews, well, betrayal of treaty and all that reason. Okay. But, but they do use that, and that's maybe the soccer. And they use the soccer as a resource, and then to say he's fictional. So you see, it's a hypocritical. Yeah, I wouldn't do that either. Yeah. Well, okay. so, yeah, okay. so, yeah, fair so, enough. Let me show you something. Okay. I like books. Yeah, I mean, book it's not, it's not actually, in my library. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Someday maybe I'll invite you. I invited David and he didn't come. So. Oh, okay. so when we look at, this is an interesting book, you may want to get it. Studies in Hadith. Go for it, go for it. Yeah, it's Three. Okay, so, you want to share? I, I, mean, share. It, I don't want to take their materials. I think they're a little bit. You're a guest, so we in the staff uh, <laughs> you're a guest. Well, you know, you've been to Jordan, I'm sure you've seen this. Oh, uh, yeah, it's fun. Oh, wow. Okay. Maybe this way. Okay. There, fair enough. I just don't want to block the people from watching. Oh, yeah. Is this a good thing? I'm just. So this is an interesting book, one of the early books that I studied. It's called Studies in Hadith Methodology and Literature by M. Mustafa Al Azam. This is about people can benefit as well. Apparently, a lot of people watch the videos on it. Uh, yeah. Enjoy the case. So, again, it's a well referenced, well written book. You can go back to it. But one of the things that I wanted to point out in okay. here is that the teachings of the Sunnah by the Prophet were written in a method, yani in a logic manner. All of the letters of the Prophet to kings, rulers, chieftains, and Muslim governors can be included in the teachings of the Sunnah as the written media. Some of those letters are very lengthy and contain legal matters containing zakat, taxation, forms of ibadah, worship. We can estimate the number of letters which were probably sent by the Prophet and the record actually related to them that he wrote at least, had at least 45 scribes who wrote for him at some time or the other. So, including Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, others. Um, so, what does that tell you first off? that the letters that were written by the Prophet to different kings are a clear archaeological evidence of him and what he wrote and what he teach, taught, right? And this will bring the lifetime of the Prophet if you upon Now, if you, as you like to travel, if you go to Bahrain, for example, the airport in Bahrain, they have scanned the letters that were sent by the Prophet with the seal of the Prophet you know the seal? He used to have a ring. It said Muhammad Rasulullah, uh -huh. and he would because the Prophet they couldn't write himself. Uh -huh. He would have scribes write, uh -huh. but then he would take the ring and he would put the stamp on it. Okay. So these are present. For example, in Bahrain, there is one that is in the museum. They carbon dated it. They know the age of it from the time of the Prophet peace be upon him. They have scanned the print up. You know, you can find it. And what's the name of that? It's a letter. Of the, there's no letters. It's, there's no name. It's a letter of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the king of Bahrain. And okay. in current day Bahrain, which is much smaller than the kingdom used to be, uh -huh. in the island of Bahrain, uh -huh. they have a scan. Even if you land on the airport, you'll see a scan. Okay. You can look it up. Okay. So these letters, and there are many others, these are clear evidence that would show that these false claims of the apostle are not existing or not being in the way that he was, meaning that the stuff that was not written down, so as we said, until 200 years of Fadi or 300 years and so on, is a false claim. Right? Any other examples? We've got to get to a lot. SubhanAllah. We don't just have one or two. We have many of these letters that are well documented. You can find them in museums across the Muslim world, in the Islamic Museum in Medina, in Turkey, Istanbul,
in Amman, Jordan, for example, you find this letter that's from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, on display in the museum. And it is to Heracl, the king of Rome. Heraclius, who is the Byzantine emperor, was sent this letter. In the books of Hadith, you will find the Ayah, the Ibn al-Khalifa al-Kalbi, that he is the one that took this letter. And the wording of the letter is documented in the books of Hadith, and it matches the artifact itself. So it shows that this is an original letter. You will also find in this that the stamp of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, is right there. And this was something that you will find across the letters of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Because he was unable to read or write, he would have a scribe write the letter and then he would use a ring as a seal to stamp, to know that this is from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. I want you to look at these letters and find that the stamp is there in all of them. And in the stamp it reads Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad the Messenger of Allah. Now, their idea that no Muhammad was a Christian, Billah, or he didn't exist, would all be proven wrong by these historic documents that are found in museums and collaborated by the wording that is mentioned in the books of Hadith independently. Now, if we had just one or two, that would be one thing. But we have many, not just to the Romans. For example, the letter here of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to the Coptic king, uh, Maqawqis. Maqawqis is uh, known to be a king that was there in the Coptic region of Egypt, not in the Najashi area, which we'll talk about as well, of Ethiopia and so on. But this letter was sent by the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. You will find the stamp there again, same. And this is again in display on display in Medina, in the Islamic Museum there. Now, um, you can also find this letter here. This is the letter of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to Najashi, the king that was that ruled Ethiopia at the time, Habasha. And uh, Negus, as they say, he is somebody that's well known in history. In the books of Hadith, it's also mentioned about this letter being sent and how he accepted Islam. And this artifact, the letter itself, is also documented and preserved. Now, here are other letters that you can find from the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, that were sent to different kings in different regions that are well documented. So we don't just have one or two. We have many of these to different kings that were sent and they're mentioned in the books of Hadith. So the books of Hadith, they say this letter was sent, it was carried by this person, it was read at this time and so on. And then you have the actual letter itself, the manuscripts that you can find in the museums that scholars have talked about and documented and discussed. Um, so this shows that these artifacts are there as evidences. Okay, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries, no worries. I taught classes on this issue, so we got you. I just don't want to spend too much time on it, but I'll give you enough that you're going to enjoy it. As if you'll start. This is a book called Fawaid fi Ulum al Hadith. Uh -huh. Since you know Arabic, this is, uh, it's in Arabic. This is by Abu Ala uh, Abdul Rahman Mubarak. Uh, Mubarak Puri. Well, this is actually. Al Mubarak Puri. Oh, the Arabi Mubarak Puri. Like in Aslan Woman Hind. And in India, it's a place called Mubarak Kur. He's from there. He wrote an amazing work called Sukhat al Ahwadi. Uh, if you look in my Taribat channel, we have a playlist of books. I discussed that book about the it's an explanation of the Tirmidhi. The Muqaddimah, the introduction to that, has been printed as a book by itself as well. Okay. okay. It's called Fawahid. Fee. Uh -huh. Ulum. And Hadith. So, under the section that has Jam Sunnah, this is page number nine. Okay. Okay. So he mentions and without reference. So I mean, it's not just him writing there, yeah. right? Sahifa Ali bin Abi Talib of the Meaning there was an actual written form of hadith, a book you could call it, not book in the sense of index of bars and things, uh -huh. but a hadith written down uh -huh. in a sahifa of Ali bin Abi Talib. That was written down during the lifetime of the Prophet. Okay. We have it? We do, and I'll explain where. Okay. 
Sahifa of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Haas. Sahifa Ibn Hazm, the third. Sahifa Samura Ibn Jundu. Sahifa Abi Huraira, famous Sahabi Abu Huraira. This is just a part of what the Sahaba wrote down. And these are all Sahaba. These are all Sahaba. Radiallahu anhu. So, what does that tell you? And, and I'll explain where people reported later how, and we'll get to that. Okay. But what it does tell you that a hadith was written down, and those that came later depended on some of these works were written down during the lifetime of the Prophet. Now, interestingly, when I mentioned, for example, Julius Caesar, you said you have no reason to doubt, but we couldn't, me and you couldn't together, name one eyewitness to those accounts. Right? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, but I'm saying it, even though you haven't looked into it, you said you have no reason to doubt his existence or what we know about him. But here, I'm giving you actual names of those that were first-hand writers that wrote down to me while the Prophet was in front of him. Right? That's definitely clear, greater evidence. Alhamdulillah, do we have the manuscripts of the early books of Hadith? Yes, we do. Here you find this manuscript that is that is preserved in an Austrian library of the Muatta Imam Malik that is dated to his own time, meaning during his lifetime, this is written, the manuscript of Imam Malik's Muatta. Now this is way earlier than Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, and all the other scholars that we'll talk about, but here we have the early manuscript. Now, do we have anything earlier than him? Yes, we do. Look at this. The chain that Imam Malik quotes from, he quotes from Suhail ibn Abi Salih, who quotes from Abu Salih, uh, an Abihi, yani from his father, Abu Salih, who is a direct student of Abu Huraira. Now, so that means Suhail and his father Abu Salih are before Imam Malik. Here we find who did Abu Saleh take knowledge from, he took it directly from the Sahaba like Sa'ad ibn Waqas radiyanhu, Aisha radiyanha, Abu Hur radiyallahu anhu, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyanhu, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu, Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiyallahu anhum. He took the hadith directly from them. Who wrote them down from him? His son Suhail. His Suhail, Suhail documents these hadith from Abu Saleh. So he wrote them down with his father. And his father died in 101 Hijri. 101 Hijri. That means Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him, died in 11 Hijri. This is his death isn't even 100 years past the life of the Prophet peace be upon him. So when they wrote him down directly from the Sahaba, there is nobody between Abu Saleh and the Sahaba and his son Suhail when he documents from his father. That means that this was during the lifetime of the Sahaba. And yes, we have manuscripts. Look at this. This is the manuscript from the Nusukh of uh, Suhail, who documents from his father. And his father died in 101 Hijri. So this means if he documented from his father, this was before 101 Hijri. What about the other books of, of the people before Imam Malik? For those that wrote down a hadith directly from the Sahaba, then, for example, Hammam ibn Munabbih, we spoke about him, that these manuscripts have been recorded by those scholars who took from them, like Abdul Razak al-Sanani and the Muslim Imam Ahmad. They have recorded these manuscripts and these written down from these written manuscripts of hadith. They recorded the hadith. And we have, for example, here the, a copy a manuscript Muslim Imam Ahmad that contains those a hadith that he wrote from looking at the written works of Hammam ibn Munabbih 
who took them directly from Abu Huraira, the Sahabi, peace and blessings be upon all of them. Now we see that yes, we have the early manuscripts, we have them directly from the Sahaba, and we still have them today. These can be checked against the oral tradition, meaning we look at these manuscripts, and we, we look at the oral traditions with the chain of narrows connected all the way back to the Prophet wasallam. As Imam Ahmad, he writes in his Musnad that I checked this hadith against a written hadith that I saw from Hammam ibn Munabbih. And he found them to be exactly the same. Alhamdulillah, this is how we can prove from manuscripts and from oral tradition that a hadith have been preserved. If we have, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is why I gave you the reference. You can look up. And then in the book, what they would say is all of these chains, all of these references were invented by the boss of needs. But, but the problem with that statement would be, I don't know, I can't I got you, I got you. The Abbasiyah were past the time of a Zubri Imam Malik in them, right? Abdul Malik? And so, so late, the, late September. Amawiyah was first, right? Right, Amawiyah yeah. first. So Amawiyah were still there in the time of Imam Malik. I mean, you look at uh, Umar Abdul Aziz, for example, uh -huh. who was Amawi, uh -huh. and he's the first one that ordered the writing down of Hadith uh -huh. with the Zuhri. Uh -huh. So that would not be the Abbasid, so the Amawiyah, right? That would be before the Abbasiyah. Yeah, right. Yeah. So if we, if we have it. So, so again, right. what time Imam Malik, right. we have it for sure. You can come to my house, I can show it to you. We have, I mean, of course I have a printed version, but yeah. we have scan of the manuscripts as well. So their claim that these were invented by the Abbasiyah would be false just on the fact that we have the Mu'tayma Malik. Right? Okay. I got you. No problem. We got it. Okay. So, so this is an it, right? So, and again, I'm, I'm summarizing here because yeah, I don't have course. time to go. But again, like I said, this is why I gave you the references. Right, right, thank you, you can see where he mentions, where the manuscripts are, which library, all of that kind of stuff. You can look it there because good. You can look it up. Oh, it's really good. I'm impressed. Tell you. So now, from examples of where these ended up, uh -huh. is Ma Rawa Ahmad fi Musnadi, uh -huh. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Now, Imam Ahmad, he is from the early time of Abbasiyah, but he wrote the book called Musnad Imam Ahmad, right? The Musnad, M U S N A D, Imam Ahmad. It is one of the largest, earliest books of hadith, around 40,000 hadith in it, right? Yeah. He memorized one million. Alf, alf. Amazing. It's the Hilly right? City. Huh? It's the Hilly City. Uh, I mean, it's amazing, right? Okay. Ahmad, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Remember, we talked about Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As? Uh, yeah. Paul, to Ya Rasulullah, I said to Rasulullah, uh -huh. Inna nasma minka a hadith. La ya nahfadaha. We heard, we hear hadith from you, but we don't always memorize them. Afala nattubuha, shouldn't we write them? Al fala, first Yes, you know, or bala, you should write them. Right? So, what happens now? Imam Ahmed. Minta, I, you know, Minta, I, from the Muslim Imam Ahmed. Like what time, what years. So, Amr ibn al As is during the lifetime of the Prophet, he's asking the Prophet himself. Okay. Right, so from the lifetime of the Prophet to the Lord. Early, early 7th century. Or, yeah. I mean, we go by Hijri, but yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, but the, the point being, Shahid Mullah Kalam, that this was written down during the lifetime of the Prophet. Yeah. Then those hadith were then later recorded into books like the Musnad yeah. and the Bukhari. Imam Ahmed, the Musnad said that, that I saw that hadith in the writing, the Sahifa uh -huh. of the student of Abu Okay. right? So what did I tell you? That those early writings, they were then brought into the later compilation. But it's not like Imam Bukhari, this was the first one to start writing. The Sahaba, during the lifetime of the Prophet they wrote down a hadith. And those written down manuscripts then became part of the later bigger uh, compilations that come forward, okay. right? So, we have no doubt People who wrote down first and foremost uh -huh. hadith during the time of the Prophet, and then we had obviously those that memorized the chain of memorization, the Prophet, and so on and so on. Right? So, the claim is that these hadith are in the Quran is not true. Okay. Right? Because, again, 
during the time of the Abbasiyya could not be true. Because the first thing is that you have written documents that were referenced, that were written down during the lifetime of the Prophet The second problem that they would have with that is the was Zuhri. He was during the Amawiyah, Imam right? Aziz. And he was tasked to write down a hadith. His student, Imam Malik, compiled the entire work. Okay, he is, okay that means teacher of Imam Malik. Zawari was. Oh, yes. Ibn Shihab yeah. Zawari okay. was a teacher in Mahan. So he wrote down a hadith. But the sorry. Sorry, go ahead. I just want a cake. No problem. Won't deny anybody cake. <laughs>